so so you were saying that uh, criticism is an art form and things like that. So it's very personal. And then you were saying, well, criticism is trying to objectify something that that, that is subjective, not. right? And There's so so a critic is their own personal view. Why should we be listening to them if it's their if it's their view versus our view? The assumption is basically. I'll put it simply, Roger Ebert knows more about movies than you do. Okay. We're looking at people, and there are, and there are... We good? Okay. We're assuming on the part of... We're assuming basically that if I'm reading something by somebody who's writing this professionally, they have a little bit more knowledge on the background of, of this piece than I do. Now, as I pointed out, a lot of critics don't do their job, and they're not. They're just stating an opinion. But a good critic will be able to give you an opinion and try to tell you why you should. It's basically establishing pathos. It's trying to establish why you should listen to this person. So ideally, you would have somebody whose opinion you respect, whose opinion you typically agree with, that you can read from. But there is a whole lot of unworthy opinions to, slu to sling through. And I'll be totally honest, mine's probably one of them. Martin Schneider. I got a question for you. Oh, good. <laughs> you were saying about that, uh, you know, critics sometimes it's their opinion, their things, but you do research as well. When you do that, when you go to a movie, do you, and when you write your, you know, criticism, do you also incorporate what other critics that you talk? Do you talk to other critics about? What did they think and bounce ideas off of them and then form your opinion? Me personally, I try to avoid reading any other criticism until I've written my piece. If I get really desperate for something to say, I might take a look at something else and see what they've written. Um, however, a lot of my, my work does come from conversations with other members of my crew, uh, people in my uh, other editors, even if they haven't seen it, simply just talking about it and discussing, there was this scene and I'm not sure what it meant. So let's talk about it, and just talking it out sometimes reveals the answer to me. How does that, how does that change your experience as an audience? I mean, it seems like if you're constantly looking for something to you would you would think that it and there you would think that it would frustrate me. I couldn't just sit and enjoy something, but I actually enjoy. And if it should be assumed that if you're writing criticism, you're the kind of person who enjoys this. I actually enjoy sitting and being an active member of an audience as opposed. to to uh, a passive one, and looking for things, um, and looking for meanings. Because in my opinion, things like that enhance uh, an experience, a viewing experience. Now, if there's nothing interesting going on in a film at face value, if you've got an incredibly boring piece of work anyway, I won't even bother. So, it makes me a little bit more of a, it makes me a little bit more judgmental, and it makes my friends not want to go see movies with me. <laughs> Thank you.